Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I'm here to talk about the originals, this time episode 306, titled Beautiful Mistake, which premiered Thursday, November 12th, 2015 on The CW. And guys, we got quite a reveal for the master plan between the, the Sire Trinity. So uh, before we begin, just a reminder, if you haven't seen the episode yet, I highly suggest you go do that first. There's a lot of things explained in this episode that needs to be heard from the horse's mouth and not just my lame attempt of summarizing it because I may get the wrong interpretations from it. I definitely have to watch the episode again. I've only seen it once at this point. So yeah, so go watch the episode and then come back and see what I picked up from it or what I think about it. Um, so with that said, uh, let's start the 15 minute clock this time because there's something I want to talk about at the very end and then I'll go over with it. So with it started, what is something new that we learned in this episode? Quite a few things actually. Um, we learned that Elijah didn't just compel Aurora to break up with Klaus. He compelled Aurora, Lucian, and Tristan into believing that they were their respective sires so that Michael would hunt them down. So basically having the first sires act as a decoy Michaelsons. And that compulsion um, broke after 100 years when Elijah was first daggered in Italy in, in 1104 AD by Alexander from the Brotherhood of the Five. Um, when they first encountered the silver daggers. Um, another thing we learn is what the weapon is that the prophecy states. And apparently it's some bronze medallion that is supposed to be used in a spell that is meant to create a barrier around the target, making it basically impenetrable, protecting the thing inside, but also preventing them from interacting with the outside world. Um, and I'll go into more of that later. But we also learn from Rebecca, and we learn that she is close to finding a spell to bring Cole back, but Aya stops her before doing that, and the way she is stopped is not a pretty one for sure. So, most shocking moment of the episode definitely has to be Rebecca's return in the present day, not only in her witch body, but so basically Ava Sinclair's body, but also in her vampire body. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I, I knew that Claire Holt would return, so I thought that we were going to get more flashbacks with Rebecca, so it was very surprising to see Claire Holt return as Rebecca in the present day, and I really liked that. Um, aside from Rebecca's return, um, we also, the most shocking thing would have to be what the what this weapon is and the plan, plan that the, uh, the Sire Trinity have for the Michelsons. They basically plan to trap Klaus, Elijah, and Rebecca inside the the barrier that the medallion is supposed to bring and while the barrier is supposed to protect any threat against the Michelsons it will also prevent them from living out their lives so basically all the other vampires could live out their life without the Michelsons interfering or without having them risk their lives being in jeopardy because the Michelsons are, are um, in danger so basically they just Pretty much they want to seal the Michelsons up in a different version of a coffin with daggers instead, basically. Though I think they could have done that if Klaus was able to be daggered, but he's not. So they're going to go with this idea. So it wasn't something I was expecting. It was pretty shocking. We learn it through Aurora to Klaus, and then we find out what the medallion looks like because Lucian uses Camille to get to it. And apparently she had it in her Dark Artifacts um, archive this whole time. Um, so, top three favorite moments. Uh, first one has to be Freya using magic to communicate with Rebecca. The way she did, both with the visits and the drinking, um, little drink binges they take with each other. I really like that magic, the fact that Freya could project herself to wherever, wherever Rebecca is and basically kind of interact with her basically give off the illusion that they are in fact sitting in a pub together sharing a drink or um when freya uh, includes elijah into, into the spell it allows for rebecca and elijah to see each other face to face so um i really like that and especially when freya is able to use magic while she has magically placed herself where rebecca is especially when helping her against aya's attack i thought i really like that i hope we see that kind of a match that type of magic from Freya again very soon where she's kind of in two places at once. It's kind of like she astral, project, astral projected herself, but I just, we haven't seen that book yet and I really like that included it, that they included it and I hope we see more of it. That's basically what I'm getting at. And it's just great to see um, the bond between Freya and Rebecca. They've really come a long way 
and I tr it tr seems like they really are sisters who have grown up together instead of just reuniting and the just under a year ago so there's that uh, another favorite moment has to be Freya walking into the compound and finding it completely destroyed because of the fight that Klaus and Elijah had at the end of the last episode. But what Freya finds is Klaus and Elijah just sitting at the dining table, having a drink together, and Klaus bleeding into a cup so that Elijah can um, be cured of his werewolf bite. It's just them sitting calmly explaining to Freya what they fought about, how they've come to a conclusion that their sires, or that their, um, their first, sires or progeny i guess are conspiring against them and how they're trying to turn each other against one another and how they have to find a way to destroy them and all said calmly all said while toasting to a drink it definitely reminds me of when klaus and elijah were having a dinner with stefan and damon back in episode 313 of the vampire diaries and they were talking about tatia and how they said that they had family above all um family always in forever and they just had a toast to that and they were on the same page as that it gave me a very similar feeling and I just really like the fact that after all the fighting they're all covered in blood their their clothes are torn up and yet they're just calmly sitting there having a drink I really like that um another favorite moment has to be Klaus's fury after he gets the call telling him that Rebecca has been taken incapacitated taken in her original body. He is just furious at the fact that his baby sister is in this dire situation. As you just can tell on his face. It's just like, oh crap, he is furious. And I just really like that. I always liked Klaus's protectiveness over Rebecca, over Rebecca, even though it may be deemed as overprotectiveness, but after everything they've been through, the one constant was that Klaus was, in his twisted way, has always protected Rebecca and he's always tried to do the best by her even though some of it may be twisted in some sense he's always wanted to do right by Rebecca and the fact that someone has taken it taken her from him is very troubling for him and I really like that they showed that again I definitely missed it since Rebecca's not on the show anymore or as often as she was before so um top three peeved moments uh first one is that it irritates me how much of an upper hand Tristan Lucian and Aurora seem to have over the Michelson family. It seems like the Michelsons are playing catch up with them. And it just seems it seems like it shouldn't be like that. The it shouldn't be the students are teaching the teachers, it should be the teachers teaching the students in the sense since the Michelsons are the older, they're stronger, they're supposed to be wiser, and yet appears like the first ones they turn seem to be the more wise of them all, it seems. Um Second favorite moment, um, or not favorite, second peeved moment, I should say, I'm sorry, was that Lucian compelling Detective Kinney, that last one where he just says that you are never going to completely connect the dots, it's always going to drive you crazy to the point that you're basically going to start hating yourself, that was a cruel, cruel compulsion. It's like, I feel so bad for Dr. Kinney, he's basically going to drive himself crazy with that one, it's just... It's unfortunate, for sure. Uh, last peeved moment has to be the Klaus and Aurora present day. I can't tell if Klaus was playing a game with Aurora just to get her to talk by using her love for him against her, or if he genuinely still has feelings for her, which I hope is not the case. Especially when he showed that bricked up painting of her that he claims he painted two year, 200 years ago in hopes of painting what haunts him would free him from it i had really hoped that he had painted that he had used his vampire speed to paint the picture and then brick up the wall and then make it look like it's been there for a while and then go off with the play go off with the ploy that it's been there for 200 years and showing that he still thought of her after 800 years of being apart and stuff, I just really hope that it was just Klaus playing with Aurora, trying to get her vulnerable to um, reveal the secret plans to him. And I really hope he's not actually still in love with her or still with emotion or still has emotions towards her. I'm really hoping that's not it. But it irritated me that I could not tell if he was playing her or if she was playing him or if there was no playing at all between them. 
Um, so what moment will I remember most about this episode it has to be the fact that we got to, uh, we got to know what the weapon is that's in the prophecy that's meant to, um, immobilize the Michael Sims. But I don't know if it's actually the, the, I'm not sure if it's the weapon from the prophecy, actually. It's a weapon that's meant to trap the Michelsons and protect them as well. But the prophecy states that there's a weapon to kill the Michelsons. So I'm wondering if this weapon with the medallion is meant to be kind of like a safeguard against a weapon that could kill them. So learning out about that plan will be a reminder for sure. Uh, the fact that Rebecca returned will be uh, another major moment to remember. I always like it when we get familiar faces coming back. So, um, random questions. Uh, first one, if the Trinity plans to stick the Michelsons into a barrier that keeps them protected yet unable to interact with reality, then isn't Aurora's plan to get Rebecca into her hand just hijacking that plan? I mean, if she keeps Rebecca with her, protecting her own sire, then doesn't that mean that they can't put all three Michelsons in the barrier because all three need to be present in order for it to work on them i guess i'm i don't know i'm still a little confused i'd have to go watch the episode again but next question do you think davina will help the, the trinity in activating that medallion barrier thing because tristan wanted to kill Haley because she was an obstacle to get to davina so i'm wondering if um davina will actually willingly go with the plan of imprisoning the michaelsons therefore eliminating them but she still have to deal with all the other vampires around town. So there's that question. And um, this last question I have is not actually a question. It's a rant in itself. And it's kind of why I added the extra five minutes to the timer. Um, so basically, I just want to say, for the record, I just want to say that, the evolu- that I love the evolution of the originals. I think it keeps getting better and better. However, there are times where I feel like what is revealed about the Michelsons on this spinoff contradicts what was said about them back on the Vampire Diaries. Does anyone else feel like that? I'd hate to be the only one who feels like that. But it just, it's just been bugging me for a while. And I just I felt like I had to say, I had to bring it up at some point. So basically why I think that is because, I mean, before Klaus and Elijah were even seen on screen together in season two of the Vampire Diaries, we were painted this picture that these two immortals were at odds with each other for the past 500 years to the point that Elijah was trying to find a way to kill the reclusive Klaus. Apparently the part where they met, the time when they met Catherine was meant to be, meant to be the time where they seemed to be on opposite ends with each other. And Klaus was said to be so in hiding that very few knew what he looked like. So there's that. Also, many vampires viewed Elijah as Klaus's former right-hand man, leaving leaving the impression that many didn't know that Elijah was an original like Klaus. And the impression was that Klaus was one of the old, one of the originals and one of the most deadly of them. Um, no one hinted that Klaus and Elijah were brothers until Elijah told Elena back in episode 219, the episode we saw Klaus for the very first time. Um, also, no one hinted at the fact that the original vampires were actually the original vampire family until Rebecca spelled it out to Elena back in episode 308. Since before that, we only knew that Klaus and Elijah were half-brothers. Name the originals. Um, no one really knew that the term was actually meant for the original family itself. Uh, And then when it came to finding information about the originals, it was always, it always gave the impression that it was impossible to get correct sources about them, especially we see this through um, uh, Elena and the gang's research on the Sun and Moon curse, which actually turned out to be um, the hybrid curse, which very few knew about, and Elijah and Klaus made sure of that when they created all these fake documents. Um, when there was um, the vampire Slater, that big researcher, um, I believe Elijah was impressed by how much information Slater was uh, Slater got on the originals because because apparently they were supposed to be so hard to actually get correct information about them. So um, there's that, and then there's even Rose who worked with Elijah back in. Um, 500 years ago, um, how she feared Elijah, feared Klaus, and how um, just she was on the run from them, basically. 
So there's that. Um, also the story of Tatia uh, from episode 313 on the Vampire Diaries gave us the impression that Esther killed Tatia since she was the girl that stood between Klaus and Elijah, basically giving us the impression that she was like Catherine. And then Esther used Tatia's blood in the spell that created vampires, and then the leftover blood was used in Klaus's curse. Um, I even have the quote Elijah used when telling Damon and Stefan about this. Uh, he said, in a quote, Our mother was a very powerful witch. She sought and interfered over Tatia, and so she took her. Klaus and I would later learn that it was Tatia's blood that we consumed in the wine on the night where our mother performed the spell which turned us into vampires. Tatia wouldn't make a decision between the two of us, so for a time, Nikos and I grew estranged. Harsh words were traded. We even came to blows, didn't we, brother? So that painted the image that Tatia was playing the two brothers because she wanted the best of both worlds. Um, another thing is that when I actually finished, well. Wow. Okay, um, next thing was that when Elijah was surprised to learn that clouds didn't dump their family into the ocean in episode 222, after his curse was lifted, we were left to think that for centuries that is what Elijah believed Klaus had done. However, when we get to the spin-off, all of this that we learned in the Vampire Diaries is contradicted in some way. Klaus was said to be in hiding, yet flashbacks from the original show him in very different roles, con conversing with many influential people, hiding while living luxuriously. Um, another, many vampires knew that Klaus and Elijah were brothers, and that they were from the original family, and that they were running from Michael. Many could even identify who Klaus is, when before they said that it was hard, that no one even knew what he looked like, or no one even knew the connection between Klaus and Elijah, except for the fact that they were considered originals. Another thing, many seemed to know the secrets about the originals themselves, instead of misinterpretations heard by others, as legends usually are, they get misinterpretations, or because Klaus and Elijah made legends up so that people get the wrong idea and therefore not knowing the truth about the originals. Yet some people seem to know the secrets from the originals itself. Another thing, Tatia wasn't killed by Esther that we learned in episode 205 of the originals. Instead, Esther had, used, had asked Tatia for some blood in order to use for the vampire spell. But then afterwards, it was vampire Elijah who drained Tatia to the brink of death and then Esther ended Tatia's life by taking her body from Elijah and using her blood to curse Klaus. Another thing, Elijah has been with Klaus for the last 1,000 years, with maybe a century apart from each other, especially after fleeing from New Orleans in 1919. Their siblings were always with them, whether daggered or not, or they always knew the location of their siblings, which is completely different to how we were given the impression in Season 2 how Elijah believed that they were all lost at sea for many years it seemed. So there, another thing, there's also the confusion behind the mechanics behind on being an original itself. Only one uh, confusion comes directly to mind, and that is in episode 215 of the Vampire Diaries, when Catherine told Damon that if an original is daggered, then their compulsion on a vampire would be permanent. However, Catherine proved later on that that was not to be true. Instead, when an original is daggered, that means their compulsion on vampires is undone, which was shown when Elijah's compulsion to keep Catherine in the tomb was reversed when Alaric and Elena daggered Elijah. So that's, if that is the case, what about all the other incidences when the originals compelled vampires and have been daggered after doing so? Wouldn't those compulsions be reversed? The same if an original dies, their compulsion on a vampire is reversed as well, which was shown when Damon and Cole with Damon and Cole in episode 411 and 412 of The Vampire Diaries, when Cole compelled Damon in 411, then to have it reversed in 412 after Cole was killed by Jeremy. Yet I don't see any of these ramifications being reflected on the spinoff. Okay, scratch that. Thankfully, tonight's episode touched upon this very fact, with compulsions being undone by daggering when Elijah revealed that he had compelled Lucian, Aurora, and Tristan into believing they were their respective sires on the run, but that was undone when Elijah was first daggered a hundred years later by Alexander from the Brotherhood of the Five back in Italy when they first came across the Silver Daggers. That was in episode 404 of the Vampire Diaries. So, as, so if it wasn't for this, for tonight's episode, we never would have got any hint of uh, the ramification of vampire compulsion being undone if the original is daggered. Never would have had that on the spinoff if it wasn't for tonight's episode. So I guess the point of this rant was basically me with the impression 
that I've been given for the past how many years? Six years now? Impression since season two of Vampire Diaries. I've always been given the impression of who these originals are and then after having them on screen for so long. I always now feel like there's two different vibes to the past versions of the originals, if that makes any sense. There's the the legend that we were brought up to believe they were back on the Vampire Diaries before they were introduced. And then there's the originals we got to learn in the present day who they are. And then now they're the originals that we are learning in the flashbacks on the spinoff itself, which may not seem like the same vibe that we got on the Vampire Diaries. I'm not even sure. It's just at some point I wonder where where are these evil legends that we were told that scared people on the run back on the Vampire Diaries for like 500 years and yet we see people getting away with stuff from them now on the spinoff? It's just, I don't know, it's just... Sometimes it bugs me despite the fact that I love the show. I loved how far the Michaelsons have come. I love their development. I love that we're getting all these different sides to them. It's just sometimes when they do the whole flashbacks or we learn something new about their history, it kind of doesn't map up with the image I had created off of previous information about their past, if that makes sense. So sorry that that took so long. I didn't really... Apparently, writing all of it down jot note wise did not really help me because I had this, um, this rant just popped up like two days ago in my head and I had to write it down and share it with you guys and I didn't want to do another video to do it. So, just go on to predictions quickly, it's very short. Um, next episode is the Thanksgiving ep episode and apparently we got the Michelson inviting Tristan, Tristan, Aurora, and Lucian to dinner. So, that should be fun, right? Um, so my own prediction for this season is that Rebecca's body is nowhere to be found. So I believe Klaus is going to be more determined than ever to get her back. Uh, don't know what he's going to do. Don't know how he's going to do it. But that shall be interesting. And I can't wait for that reunion between them. For sure. Um, uh, next prediction. Lucian still has Camille at, as his hostage, as seen in the promo. And that's probably because he's waiting for the Ravain to be out of her system, but what is Cammy going to do? She's got to have to some way prolong um, Lucian compelling her to forget, forget certain things, or she has to find a way to get out of his place before um, he finds her again. Um, uh, next prediction, we have the weapon now, but or we have our weapon, not necessarily the weapon in the prophecy, but what about the beast of the prophecy? We gotta learn something about that soon. I really want to put a face to the na face to that shadow of an image or some kind of name to it. I don't want to keep calling it the beast. So um, that's about it. I took longer than expected. I am so sorry about that. Um, apparently, I once I get started talking about something, I just can't stop. So, what did you guys think of the episode? Um, did you like it? Did you expect anything? Did you? have your own confusions about it or if you have your own answers to my confusions please let me know in the comments below love to hear about it um also don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel check out my other videos or share this with anyone that you are friends with in the originals fandom spread the word around let's keep let's build this fan base make it grow have it last a little longer for sure there's so much more there's a thousand years worth of storytelling to reveal as well as f future timelines to reveal and i'm waiting for a crossover i want a crossover with the vampire diaries for sure um so there's that um also if you want a more detailed recap about the episode itself like a play-by-play -play, if you will check out my live journal account the link for that will be down below if you want any news from the originals itself whether it's by episode, whether it's the promo, sneak peeks, synopses, episode stills, or any GIF sets that ever cross, come across my dashboard, all of it can be found at my Tumblr. Uh, links for those will be down below. Um, I like to keep everything in one place, and hopefully that is a conven that is convenient to, to you like it is to me. So just check that out. And that is pretty much it. So I'm going to end this video now, and... 
this is Mel wishing you all a great Thursday and have a good week. Bye for now.